Hi there, I'm Trucker Ray, and before we get to our presentation, I wanted to share with you a new way to contact me. That's right, I finally got a post office box. A lot of you have been sending emails and leaving comments on my YouTube channel, and that is awesome, but I know some of you still like snail mail. So, if you have something you'd like to send, whether it's a card, or you want to buy me a cup of coffee, or whatever it might be, this is where you send it. P.O. Box 12306 Langley RPO, which stands for Royal Post Office, Logan Creek, British Columbia, Canada, V2Y0Y7. That's P.O. Box 12306 Langley RPO, Logan Creek, BC, Canada, V2Y0Y7. Now, if you're ready, let's get to our presentation. Good morning, everyone. I am just leaving the Flying J here in Winnipeg. I am heading to Martin Brower over on Inkster Boulevard, which I'm familiar with. Well, I'm familiar with the, the road. I know it's not in the middle of Winnipeg somewhere, so which is nice. Is actually on the uh, north end, the industrial section. I guess I'm picking up a bunch of cartons or something, some empty products, empty cartons, empty cases, which is going to be flat out sailboat fuel. It's going to be really light load. Uh, it is pretty windy out here, but I think the wind is coming from the west, so that'll work in my favor. I'll be driving into the wind. And that's going to Calgary, so it's going to get me a little bit closer. And from Calgary, you just never know what they're going to do. They could send me just south from there. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's chilly out here this morning. Um, I guess Winnipeg does not believe in springtime. You know what? I know people like to live out here they're born and raised and this is home but I don't know how they could live out here I couldn't live out here so uh, uh, how we look in here okay I guess we can go that nice little pothole there knock a few bolts loose there you go but uh, as you can see here it's still I mean the snow never accumulated it was never a big deal that's not the issue though, it's just the blowing wind, how cold it is, it's just flat out miserable. Just miserable. Miserable weather for spring. And I'll be very, very happy, all too happy, to head the other direction. <laughs> Hopefully it's a little nicer weather in the Calgary area. I'm not sure where it's going. I'm assuming it's going to another mountain, Martin Brower. That's where I'm, what I'm assuming. But it could be going somewhere else, I don't know. But uh, we'll head over there and uh, yeah. See what's going on with that. Whether or not uh, it's going to be a difficult load. I don't think it will be. Like I said, it's Martin Brower. It's a big facility. It's probably easy in, easy out. GPS wants me to do a U-turn 1725 I wonder if that's it right there that's it right there Martin Brower right there 
but the uh, GPS wants me to go all the way down and pull a U-turn in the middle of the road. Yeah. Don't trust your GPS, you guys. If you're new, don't trust it, man. I mean, certain places you can trust it where, where it will go, like if you're off a freeway. But when you're in town, yeah, you might want to just second guess that. So, Martin Brower is right here. And I have no clue. If this is even the end, well, there's loading docks. There's gotta be the entranceway right there. But I don't know if this is the right place. This could be a totally different place though. Martin Brower is up there. Okay, hold on here. Hi there. I'm looking for uh, basically the address that's on the building there. Is 1725. That, is it the whole building? The whole building is just there's a whole bunch of venues here, so you have to get a unit number. Well, I, I want Martin Brower, so it's down there. It's just right there. Okay. Okay. Phenomenal, thank you. Yeah, so that building is basically, that is it. So I'm guessing Martin Brower. Uh, yeah, 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 I got a feeling it's on the other. It's the loading docks that are off. Do you need me to de detach as well? No, no. Just this? Just this. And the then lines. And then lock. Okay, so what door? So, uh, I'll phone you for the door. I'm not so sure yet. I might probably put you in 21, but then wait for me. Call. Are these your doors here too? Here. Oh, because I'm parked over there. I didn't know. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. You can, you can just park there. Okay, well, I guess they use these doors over here too. <coughs> So I'm just gonna stay where I am over there and wait for her to call me into a door. And she, I guess they want you to lock your... Uh, this is a nice one, it's metal. I'd love to get one of these. New Line, hmm. New Line Glad Hand Lock. Because the one I have is a hard plastic, but I'd rather have a metal one. Maybe I'll look and see if I can find one. Okay, I've been called to door 21. And... Okay, door 21 has got somebody in it. So we'll just have to wait for him to leave. He's probably playing with his phone, that's what he's doing. As soon as I get up there, I'm going to hit my horn. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to have a train horn? Yeah. Absolutely. Door 21 it is. Hopefully, I'll get out of his way so he can leave. Oh, there's not a whole lot of room to get into here. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to back up a bit. Get a little bit tighter. That way, I can just nose the trailer right into where I want it to go without a problem. Come on, buddy. I'm going. Let's go. Get off your phone, I need to go. Or need to get in, rather. <laughs> Dyslexia is a horrible disease. 
I'm not making fun of it. I, I have dyslexia. Not an insane amount, but it's enough. Look at how tight this is to get in and out of here. Yeah, it's gonna be tight. Oh, no it won't. There's tons of room in here. So we'll do it the way I used to do it way back when, when I was with Challenger. Let's do a 45. Actually, you know what? Let's get a little bit further. Don't make it harder on yourself than it needs to be, Ray. You know what? You see the drivers, they sit in their truck and they just sit on their phones and that's what they stare at the entire time they're in a door waiting to be unloaded or loaded. Just incredibly boring. Nobody reads books anymore. Nobody does anything like that anymore. I wonder if I can do this in one shot. By golly, I think I did it. One shot. Right, so while I'm waiting, I am gonna make myself something to eat. And I haven't completely 100% went back on my carnivore diet. For those of you that are wondering, I'm working on it, but it is difficult because, I don't know, for some reason, when you've been on it for a while and you get off of it and you get back on the, uh, you know, regular junk diet is what you call it. You just, uh, it's hard to get back on it. All right, so this is my freezer. And I have, I'm gonna show you guys here. As you can see, I've got a lot of burritos in here, but these aren't bad. These are really low carb. The, the wraps are really, really thin. I'm gonna get one of these out because I need more butter but this is all meat this is all like steaks so I'm gonna take two of those out I wonder if I should do three no two two is good enough but on this side here is another zone and uh, these are turkey wraps. There's a little breading on them, but they're really low on carbs too. Really low. And of course I got barbecue chicken. I've got other food in here. So it's a dual zone freezer, which is nice because if I want, I can change this to a fridge and a freezer. But there's no sense on doing that if I already have a fridge. And then uh, I just have it strapped down on the top bunk. I don't know how long it'll take for these guys to load me. I'm gonna get one of these paper plates. Open up the microwave. Oh, my wraps are here. So these aren't bad little wraps. They're not bad. They do look smaller though than they used to be, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I haven't had them for a while. Maybe they are smaller now. Who knows? So I like to leave them in the wrapping just because when they're, when you warm them up or heat them up in the microwave, they cook faster when they're surrounded with the moisture inside the bag. So let's put, uh, 
I'm going to do six minutes, even though that's probably going to be way too much. Oh, you have to put the lock, uh, the seal on? I, I need to remove. Okay. Do you need me to sign this? No? Okay. What's your name? I just know your name. My name? Ray. R A Y? Okay. So, where is this going? Saputo. Sun's Bakery in Calgary. I'm sorry? Sun's Bakery. Are you going there straight or bring that trailer in uh, swag? No, I'm going to Calgary. Oh, yeah. Sun's Bakery. Calgary. Oh, Sun. Oh, Sun. Sun's. Sun's Bakery? Yeah. Is there an address? Oh, no. You can ask Swag. You can ask Swag. Well, is there only Christmas? one Sun's Bakery? I think so. So yeah. I should just look up the address. I should find it? Oh, just uh, check with uh, Swag first. Maybe Alrighty. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's kind of funny. Uh, I got the bill, but I don't have an address. So now I gotta look up an address online to see where this is going, which is kind of silly. You think that at least I would get an address. Sun's Bakery. <sighs> it's kind of silly, isn't it? I should not have to be looking up an address. <laughs> Now let's see how they loaded this. Oh my goodness, it's right to the door. <laughs> Good, I don't need to put a seal on it. Or should I say a strap on it? It's not gonna go anywhere. Well, I'm certainly glad I washed my trailer out for this. Don't want these plastic skids being contaminated with a dirty trailer. Oh, Ray, you're getting sarcastic again. And I can't do my ole. No, there's no echo in there. We're right to the back, right to the nose. And off to Calgary we go. got out of the bad weather. Not 
just the snow, but the wind. I mean, the snow was not a big deal. But it was blowing hard and it was cold. And now we're a little bit warmer temperatures. Not by much, maybe about by a couple degrees. But as you can see, the sun is out. So it's good. Uh, I'm going to shoot for uh, Moose Jaw tonight. There's a couple places I can park over there. I'm not going to go to the Flying J. I'll probably never get in there. Um, but there's a, a Tim Hortons and a, uh, an AW there. Right on the service road near the Big Moose. Where I'm going to park. Notice that the A and W near where the Flying J is in Moose Jaw shut down, and I didn't know where the new one. I didn't know they built a new one. And I was talking to Trucker Barry, and he told me that it's over there near the Moose, and that there's parking over there. So thank you, Barry. I'll check it out when I go through there. I should be there in about an hour and a half. I don't have. I found out I don't have to deliver this load until Sunday morning. So. I don't need to rush by any means. The bizarre thing about this whole delivery, there's no address on the bill of lading, just a name of where it's going. I had to Google the address. I had to Google the phone number, but the phone number doesn't work to where this is delivering to. We got two conflicting reports on when it delivers. I called the trucking company we're delivering this on behalf of. They weren't very friendly. Considering I'm delivering their load, you'd think they would be a little bit more cheerful, but they're not. Just <laughs> It's just bizarre. It's just these, these loads we get in Canada are just so weird. Just bizarre. But anyway, so I'll make it to Moose Jaw tonight and then I'll have about six and a half, seven hours to go to Calgary. Find a truck stop. Maybe the main one there in town. I'm gonna drop my trailer there. Lock everything up. Uh, it's, there's no value on this trailer, so I'll make sure the back door's locked. I'll have my kingpin lock on there. I'll have my, my airline lock on. It'll be like a fortress. And then I'm going to bobtail down to this place and find out where on earth I'm delivering this to. And find out how to get into there. I don't want to go down there with the trailer itself. I mean, I might. You know, I might do that. If I get into town early enough, I might go there with my trailer. And just see where this thing delivers. Yeah, we got the Saskatchewan Highway Patrol. Keeping an eye and making sure everybody's keeping themselves honest. You know, it's funny. Out of out of all of the provinces, that's the only highway patrol that I'm aware of, that that I ever see. I know there is the Ontario, the OPP, but they're not called highway patrol. You don't have that in Alberta. You don't have that in BC. It's just. The RCMP, raw carrots and mashed potatoes. They're the ones that are always out. Besides the OPP in Ontario, I don't know what's in Quebec. I really don't want to know. And the rest of the provinces, I, I don't know. There maybe there's a highway patrol. Manitoba, I don't. There's, I don't see a highway patrol there either. And it's just usually the RCMP. Saskatchewan, they have a highway patrol. So I find that interesting. I know you really wanted to know that information. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it sure is nice to see the nice weather again. So as we make our way through Indian Head, we got about another hour, hour and a half to go. And that's good timing because I'm starting to get hungry. And that'll be the end of my day when I park it. And I'll start early enough tomorrow. I can get into Calgary early enough to get a decent parking spot at one of the truck stops. Yeah, and that'll be it. The World Snooker Championships start tomorrow morning. 
like at 4 a.m. I'm so excited about that. If anybody follows me, you you know how much I like snooker. And uh, it's just thrilling. It's a 15 to 18 days. A really exciting snooker on the World Championship. Yeah, it's a long tournament. It's a long one. It's a grueling one, but it is exciting. Live at the Crucible Theater in Sheffield, England. Yeah. Hoping Ronnie O'Sullivan can win his eighth world title, which would be a record. I am rooting for him. I hope he does well. There you go. A little bit of a snooker update for you guys. Yeah. Just going to sit back and enjoy the weather because it is very nice right now. It's zero degrees, but you can feel the sun coming off of the wind chill, and it feels a lot nicer than it looks out there. This is Trucker's Corner with Trucker Glenn. Hey, Trucker Glenn, how are you today, sir? Well, I'm wonderful. It's a little bit different doing this when we can see each other. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're not doing this uh, remotely over a over a mic system there. Yeah, we're... Uh, we are on Life on the Road with Yeshua and Trucker Ray on the YouTube channel. Uh, some of you might know Trucker Glenn from the, the podcast that we were doing. Uh, well, we decided to move it over to the video side because we just, we love your smile, Glenn. That is the bottom line. There you yes. go. Well, I don't I see a, you smile often. I, well, you know, a lot of things tick me off, Ray. <laughs> yeah, you're a grumpy old fart, aren't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's, well, it's a rite of passage when you get my age. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. So that's your excuse. All right. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. what, what have you I, got for... I had a, I, Sorry? I was going to say I had a shower, shave. I got my hair all done for you. I got everything done, so I'm set to go. Yeah, you look great, man. You do. Postcard. Yeah, I, I, Nicely. Yes. So yes. what do you have for us today? What, what are we going to talk about? I would like to talk about speed limiters, and that is a huge topic, especially now in British Columbia, because it's yeah. coming into law. Uh, I believe it's, where is it on, um, is it De October or December it's coming into law? No, it apparently and, already um, is in law. It's already here, apparently. Oh, there you go. Yeah. A lot of people are upset about it. I am an advocate of safe driving so um i think the one the guys that are really going to be upset about this is the guys that don't care about how fast they're going and some of them as you well know are ridiculous in the speed that they go yeah so i'm kind of an advocate and and really it's it's our own fault that this has come into effect because they're not just speeding by 10 or 15 miles like they're you know i've had trucks pass me i was doing 80 miles an hour in my car one day on the coquihalla and I had a truck pass me. Wow. And and the thing is, you know, you got to realize, especially when you're pulling the big weights in, in British Columbia here, that if you blow a front tire or anything happens, you're going to be a grease spot on the road. Like, it's just everything disintegrates. Yeah. And, um, and you know, not to mention the, the danger that you're putting the public in, but... Um, the GVW, I guess, is going to be what eleven thousand kilos and up. Yeah. they're going to they're going to like twenty six thousand pounds. What is that? A five ton? Yeah, yeah. All the all the scales in BC everywhere. Like even the one down near the border, the one over near Hunter Creek, and that they all had reader boards out saying in you know speed limiters. I think it was April first. I, I might be wrong on that, but I know it's in effect now, uh -huh. which is a good thing. Yeah, and it. And it's going to be 105, and I mean 105. I, I was thinking about this before we got on the air. Uh, I decided one day, going down to California, I'm going to do the speed limit the whole way. As much as it hurts me to do 55 miles an hour, <laughs> um, I thought, I'm going to do the speed limit and just see how much longer it takes. Do you know that it? I was on time with my delivery? I was relaxed. 
I wasn't all stressed out. I didn't have to worry about speed traps or the scales pulling me in because I got there too early. And, um, and nobody got hurt. Nobody even never got close to having an accident or anything. But, um, I had, I worked for a company that they had, they had their trucks at a hundred kilometers. And I said, we're doing a lot of Albertas and you couldn't get into Alberta within your hours doing the speed limit. And that's one of the, the bad things about this. So he put it up to 72 miles an hour. And you know what? I guess I'm so used to doing under six or 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. It was scary. Like I'm thinking, man, oh man, so much is going on. You got to pay such close attention to everything that uh, it really distracts you, I think. Yeah. And you know what? You but, mentioned um, the thing about California. I mean, I, I will admit yeah. we've made enough trips into California and sometimes it's, you're so used to, like, for example, I'm so used to driving all the interstates going down to Yuma and you're used yeah. to, you know, you're used to putting your foot to the floor. And I've caught myself doing that so many times when I'm in California and I'm like, whoa, so you're right. It is stressful because you're always looking in your mirrors. You're all looking, where's the CHP? Are they waiting for me? Where's the road trap, right? It, you're almost better off just to put it at 55 or 56 and just leave it and just maybe enjoy the scenery a little bit. So I agree with you. Yeah, it's, um, and, and two, you know, you've seen it yourself. You go to sleep beside another truck beside you and he, you know he's gone to sleep the same time as you and you both ba basically wake up together and he's gone he goes yeah. he doesn't do any checks so when you're talking speed 70 miles an hour and up like i said a lot you're you're chewing up a lot of ground before you come to a stop so and you know you made a good point there these guys are doing ridiculous speeds and what kind of a pre-trip are they doing what condition is their truck in going that fast down the highway um, I was just reading on my notes here that uh, in Ontario, of course, they've had this for quite a while. Even when I was on the road, they've had the, what was it, 65 in Ontario? 105, yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> since they put that into effect, they've had a 34% reduction in fatalities. Wow. When there's accidents. Yeah. So I think they said... Um, there was a, a 1,173 fatalities in 2010 and just 36 deaths so far since they put this in. And, and I, they didn't tell me what year this was, but even so, that's from 1,100 to 36, that's, that's phenomenal. It is substantial. Yes. And, and I know there's going to be a lot of guys that disagree with me out there, but... Um, it's harder on equipment. It's harder on a driver. It's, you know, uh, sometimes you tend to leave a little later and sleep a little longer because you know, you can, you can crack it up. There's you know, 70, 80 miles an hour. And, and with this uh, speed limiting thing, you can't do that. You know, plus the, know fuel, fuel, the, scale. the fuel consumption too. Fuel. I had, um, when I was with Reimer Transport, I was a driver supervisor there for a few years. And the uh, we used to have uh, meetings for all the supervisors once a month. And they were talking about fuel consumption and speed. And they said, there's a reason why Reimer does 55 miles an hour. And they were strict on that. You, you got in a lot of trouble if you went over that. And he said, let's imagine your truck payment is $1,000 a month. And you go from 55 to 60 miles an hour, you've spent an extra thousand dollars. Wow. If you go from 60 to 70 miles an hour, it goes, I think they said it goes up to $3,000 a year that you spend an extra fuel. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of fuel. That's crazy. And they said, you know, you know, don't, don't, tell me that oh i bought a truck and it's geared to do 70 miles an hour at a low rpm and he said wind resistance is wind resistance and you know and nowadays with fuel the way it is i mean you know it's crazy especially when you get these headwinds you're watching your fuel gauge drop really quick yeah and um but 
Wasn't there a rumor, they're, too, they're that they wanted to pass that in the U.S. as well? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're looking at it, too, because of the, again, the fatalities. Um, they're talking about fines anywhere from $250, which is kind of a joke, to $20,000. Wow. Now, now you're talking major, major, major. Where does the 20000 come in? I, You know what? I don't know. I imagine it's... I would think it would be if you're involved in an accident. They, yeah. they were very vague. This is from the BC Trucking Association. They're really vague on it. Um, in um, Quebec, uh, it goes from 350 to 1,050. So it's... Uh, is the, is the driver is the driver affected or is it like if it's a driver that's working for a company is he liable for that or is the company because a lot of the time the drivers don't have a say in what the uh, companies do with their trucks you know what ray i have never heard of a company unless it's a one or two, two truck uh operation i've never heard of a company saying you know get her there if the truck will do 80 miles an hour, do it. I've never heard, or I've never been a part of a company, and I've never heard of anybody doing that because of, because of the cost. Mm. And it's, you know, especially now with fuel, I, I don't know, what are you paying for fuel now? I think when I left, it was getting close to two bucks a gallon. I don't know. Oh, I don't even know. What down it there right now, um, it averages between four, four to five in most places. And in California, it's over six. Wow. A gallon. Yeah. Maybe yeah. more. And you want to know what's even more crazy? The death is the same price. Yeah, I heard your report on that. I was really surprised. Isn't that ridiculous, though? I mean, uh, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good scam. Someone's getting rich off of that. But anyway, what else you got about that? Yeah. Well, they were saying that uh, the reason they don't want speed limiters is because when you pull out and pass somebody that's doing five... Uh, miles an hour slower than you it takes like 14 miles to get by them right of course the right. public's all upset or the other drivers that are you know trying <clears throat> trying to get ahead of you they call them elephant races right and i can see that being a problem there, there's there's still in my opinion there's still a few things they have to iron out on this but um it, it you know the reason they're going this way is because of the accidents and the tickets and of course they they amalgamate all this together when they're doing all their findings and it's just uh it's just a real danger to the public and and, and i agree like that's a lot of weight to try and stop how, you know what well, how I, do you how I, do you police something like that though how, how do you do that you know out of all the years i've driven ontario not once have i ever been stopped to check my speed even though i still do the speed limit there that i've never seen them yeah. enforce that there I've seen them come out of the scales and, and go into the computers when the guy's been read. I don't know how they got caught, but when they pulled in the scale, that's the first thing they did is they, huh. they maybe it was a company that was speeding all the time. I don't know, hmm. but it's, it's, um, you know, I, I've, I've always wanted to be able to go really fast because I was tired and I wanted to get to where I, I had to go. But really in today's day and age, it's, you know, it's non-profitable. I would like to know if there's any drivers out there that are doing 80 miles an hour, how much extra fuel they actually go through in one trip. It, yeah. It would be really interesting to know. But uh, that would that would be my my biggest thing is the is the fuel consumption if, if I was still. Well, out of all the years that you were driving, what where, where did you find that was a sweet spot on the odometer for fuel? I like between one and one oh five. That's where I liked it. Okay. Fifty five is to give you an idea, we left uh we were in Ontario, I was running double with a buddy of mine, and we were talking with a, a, a chap from another company and he took off. Of course he doesn't didn't have a um speed limit on his, like he w wasn't governed. By the time we made it to our next stop to make our switch was about four to five hours. He was just leaving after having uh, lunch, hmm. so that's that's the difference, you know. So right. we pulled in and made our switch and had something to eat. Well, this guy was already gone. So, y you know, you look into. I think Reimer used to say that they they wanted. I think it was fifty eight hours team driving to get from Vancouver to Toronto. 
And if you were, if you were under that or over that, I mean, uh, well, it would be under that, then they would know you were speeding, but they, they'd come down like a sack of hammers on you for speeding. It's terrible. Well, you, you know, the good thing though, about that law in BC, it'll just motivate the high, whoever's dealing with all these modifications on the highway to get the job done faster because passing is not going to be an issue. Someone's I mean, if everyone's going the same speed limit, there may be a guy going a little slower. Well, you can get into the other lane and go around him. But yeah. they maybe they should also try to enforce it. If you are going slower than the speed limit, then you need to back off and let guys go around you. Or get a job at McDonald's, one of the other. <laughs> there you go. I used to. A Walmart greeter. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. <laughs> yes. I, I come up on a guy one time when it was snowing up in the Rogers Pass, and he's doing 40 kilometers an hour. Ooh. Going hard. And, um, oh, I wish I could remember the hill now. But it's short and sweet. And I thought, we're both going to spin out here. I managed to get by him, but the same truck and the same company, when the sun was shining, they were doing Mach 1. You couldn't even Yeah. They were like a blur going by, so... I, I don't know. I don't think that today's driver, from what I, at least Canadian drivers, from what I've seen, I don't think they have the talent to be driving that fast. Yeah. Because they don't have the experience. I mean, I've had wheels fall off my truck for Pete's sakes at the speed limit. And yeah. I had a heck of a time hanging on to it. Like, have you ever had a, have you ever blown a steer doing full speed? No, I haven't uh, blown a steer, but uh, I had a, well, a steer tire on a pup trailer. And yeah. I, that was an experience. Yeah. That would be scary, I would think, because you would lose kind of, would you really have control where that thing is going if you blew a steer going that fast? Well, yeah, it pushes you all over the place, I'll tell you. And, and you know, at, at 55 and 60 miles an hour, you have half a chance. But when you start getting these weights up to high speeds, there's, it's, right. it's amazing. When I was teaching drivers to, uh, to drive, you know, a five axle is a very forgiving piece of equipment you can do a get out of a lot of trouble even if your trailer's trying to pass you you can get out of it but when these big weights start moving around they got a mind of their own and you better know what you're doing because if yeah. you don't be off the road and uh speed is is uh boy it's a it's a hard factor so i guess you would say to those that are complaining and whining about it suck it up buttercup this is the way it is and it's safer and it's more fuel economic and and overall, you're going to get to your location just as fast if you drive smart. If you drive smart, that's right. And usually, um, I know the dispatch, I mean, and we're talking to major companies, not the little one or two truck operations. They give you lots of time to get to your... Yeah. And I've, I've, I've had a dispatcher one time give me a hard time, and I phoned up uh, HR, safety. Yeah. I, said, I can't do this. They're, they're pushing me and... You know, it's 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 not working out. He said, if you feel you have to pull over and stop, you do that. I'll back you up. <clears throat> so they know. Like, I heard one time when a truck was off the road in an accident. And now, this would have been probably 15 or 20 years ago. It was a million-dollar bill by the time they got it back on the road. Wow. And, 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 <sighs> and most, most of the trucking, big trucking companies now, they carry their own insurance because it's just, it's not yeah. uh, you know feasible to do it any other way yeah yeah well my friend uh, i would say we are up against the clock here any final thoughts um you know like i said i'm i'm not an advocate of speed i never have been i've seen a lot of carnage on the road i've seen innocent people get killed and uh it's just i've always maintained if you're going to be a professional be a professional that's number one. You got to be able to go home and look in the mirror after your trip and think, yeah, I did a good job. Yeah. If you can't do that, then you got a problem. Then you got to start making some changes. That's Very it. good point. Very I'll, good point. I'll do my smile at the end. <laughs> uh, my friend, if somebody would like uh, to, uh, if someone would like you to talk about a specific topic, where how can they reach you? They can reach me at truckerglen10 at gmail.com. Here you go, truckerglen10 at gmail.com. Thank you, my friend. Blessings to you, and you have a great day. We'll see you again. Okay, bye-bye.
Well, good morning. I just had breakfast over at the A&W here in Moose Jaw. And uh, as you can see in front of me here, it looks like I'm on the moon. You wouldn't want to drive through here quickly, that's for sure. But I can see a little spot where I can kind of go off and get back onto the highway there. <laughs> but uh, I went over to have, like I said, breakfast at the a w here. And um, where else can you get a breakfast for under 20 bucks? You know, it's bizarre. I remember we used to be able to get a breakfast for like under $12. It's just incredible how much more expensive everything is. Uh, a friend of mine said he drove through California and he stopped at a subway to get a sub. And I found this really funny and I commented this to him. I said, or rather he told me that he went in there and because of the new um, laws that they have in California now where they bumped the um, minimum wage up to $20 an hour, people have had to lay people off companies have had to lay people off companies have had to jack all their prices up and he says on all their prices they have a piece of tape or something like that with a new price of the sandwiches up there so everything is way more expensive now to buy to purchase and there's going to be a lot less companies or should I say there's going to be a lot more of these smaller companies that are going to go out of business because people aren't just going to people aren't going to pay that you should not have to pay $20 for a sandwich that's insanity considering the sandwich bun itself is probably like if you buy it wholesale it's two dollars each plus the toppings is about five bucks plus whatever work they put on it you should be able to get a decent sandwich for about 12 bucks and that should still pay for the labor of the person making it because it only takes them five minutes to make the sandwich so 12 bucks i think is fair 12 to 13 dollars maybe even 14 dollars for a sandwich that's pushing it but 20 dollars plus that's ridiculous. And I thought too, look, they got stickers on all the prices on the whole board. I wonder who had to do that. That must have been tedious. And I mentioned, why not just put a sign on the corner of the board, all prices have a 5% increase due to the new law in California. Then you don't have to change anything. <laughs> you just add 5% on everything. But I guess that's too simple. Too simple. See, there you go again. I release my brake so I can go, and it says, please engage your parking brake. One of these days, I'm gonna try that. See how far I get. Ding dong, Qual or should I say ding dong, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, technology, ding dong technology nowadays. <laughs> I remember my dad used to make, he always had references to ding dong and bing bong and ding a ling and everything. Just, he wasn't a big fan of, of stupidity either. And you know, when a, when a truck tells you to engage your parking brake, come on gutless, you're almost empty here. Um, well, you're, when you're ready to go, I'm sorry, that's stupid. Hey, I have an idea, says the guys over at the, uh, technical department where they're designing these trucks. Why don't we, when the driver releases his yellow brake so he wants to go, let's have it so the truck says, please engage the parking brake. Let's make it even more challenging. Let's make this fun. See how far you can get. It's doing it again. You see what I mean? Ah. Now they got all this stuff in the truck still. It shows you how fast you should go, how fast you shouldn't go, when to stop, when to go, when to poop. It's stupid. Can't you just let us drive? As Moses would say, just let my people go.
Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah. How you doing? Barry's come to harass me. I can't even come into Calgary for five minutes without him bugging me. Well, the last time you were with me in the big truck, I made you walk from Greg Distributors. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so anyway. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. I'm yeah. doing good. This is a big change from your other truck. It is. This one is, uh, the last one I had was the 2015. Yeah. And I bought that one brand new. And But this one here is a 2000. She's 24 years old. Wow. Yeah. And only 65,000 kilometers on it. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's in really good shape too. I should put this on here. If I go through the windshield, I don't think Barry will forgive me when I sue him. Well, you're paying for a new windshield. <laughs> That's all? That ain't so bad. That ain't so bad. How you been? Good, good, good. I can't complain. Welcome, uh, to, welcome to Calgary. Yeah, welcome back. Yeah, yeah it couldn't be back. it couldn't be any any sooner because the weather out in uh, Winnipeg is an absolute disaster. I mean, it's just yeah, snow, wind. I mean. When I drove in there, I really thought it was gonna, I thought we were into spring, but boy, was I ever wrong. Um, okay, so we're going for coffee first? We might as well, eh? Yeah, we can. You look really good, by the way. You can really tell you drop weight. Yeah, thanks, man, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Yeah, you're, it, you're, it's, you're. It's you know, a work in progress. I know people hate to say this, but I can see it in your face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right in the chin area and that? Yeah. He's not the little tubby guy we used to know, people. Look, no, from, get, the, from get, years Get a close-up up here, down <laughs> let's, let's, let's not crack the, lem, the camera lens now, shall we? Yeah, no, you look really good, Barry. Yeah, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. And, well, he's going to be going back home for a visit for uh, 10 days. 10 days, I'll fly out next Friday. So get a good look at him, because he's not going to look like that after he gets back, because when he, when he has all that home-cooked food, oh, things my, change. Yeah, I think my mother will have about 10 pounds put on me. She's going to look at you and say, Barry? We gotta put some meat on you. <laughs> yeah. I'll put the meat on and uh, lose the fat. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. So everything going good then? Or? Everything's good. Yeah. yeah. Everything's good. Just in for uh, into Calgary for a quick 36-hour reset, and then uh, heading back out tomorrow, going to Vancouver. Oh yeah, yeah. So I guess you got you got one week, and then. Then you're heading back home to Newfoundland. I'm gonna do two round trips to Vancouver from Calgary. My last day is on Thursday and I fly out Friday morning at 7 a.m. Ah, okay. Yeah, well, that's good because um, we'll be a whole lot safer with you not on the road. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I'm only the public, kidding. The public needs a break from this naughty new thing. I, I, I'm actually kidding because Barry's probably one of the most meticulous drivers when it comes to safety out on the road. I am. Yeah, don't I, don't you get able. out like every 20 minutes and check your tires when you're driving? Only when I have to pee. Oh, <laughs> there you go. You know what's funny? What's up? When we came in, I had a look at you and your, your glasses were dark. And as soon as you went in the door and I took another look at you, your glasses were clear. I know you took them off, but I didn't see you take them off. <laughs> and I'm like, those are really cool glasses. Those are quick transition yeah. lenses, man. That's what those are. <laughs> they are so quick, the transition. I know. I'm like, wow, that's impressive. Yeah, you're going to, yeah. Okay, I know how to get there from here. So we'll go up and we'll get on Glenmore, take yeah. Glenmore over Blackfoot. That's right. And then I'll left. And then, oh, right. All right. Yeah. Where, where you got Blackfoot? Yeah, you're going to come in. Yeah, we're going to, um, uh, oh, sorry, Highway well, let me look at it. We'll yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll take a look at it. Well, that's easy enough. As soon as you get off, as soon as you get on the Blackfoot, go left at the first sunlight. Like yeah, South we're East taking a look to see what this place is where I'm delivering to tomorrow. I mean, it's bad enough. I was never given an, originally, I was never given an address. I have to look the address up. So now we're just going to this place because you can't call them to ask them if they're going to be there because there's no phone number. So, I'm wondering if this place even exists. What do you think? Well, worst case scenario, we'll see a sign that says, Welcome to Kenmore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then once we get there, we're going to take a little bit of look to see what's involved. So, when I have to do my delivery tomorrow, it'll be... That's right. Easy, easy peasy. Yeah, well, we did find it. Yes. 
This is how Barry drives his big truck, too. Newfie driving. Newfie <laughs> driving. All right. So the place, there's Sun's bakery there. I wonder if there's anybody in there right now. Maybe I should see if I can get a hold of somebody. What's just door three? Oh, shipping receiving office. There you go. Yeah, well, I'm going to go up there and see if I can get, get a hold of these guys. All right, I just had a chat with the guy inside and... Uh, yeah, someone will be here at six in the clock in the morning. Six o'clock. Did you hear what I said? Six o'clock in the morning. Have another cup of coffee. Six o'clock in the morning. Uh. Burst to dish to burst to dish to bork, bork, bork. Yeah, so anyway, so we got lots of room here to crack at night, as you can see everybody else does. So oh, that yeah. way we don't have to do a blind side. You'll have plenty from the turnaround here. In the so at least we know where it is. Thank you, Barry. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Anytime. Yeah, because um, if I would have come down here just to see where it was, I mean, it's really not obvious on the street. Uh, where this place is so this is kind of nice. I would have just dropped the trailer and came down here anyway and Try to find out where it is oh, just the time doing that. But it's a kind of a giveaway right there because there's Martin Brower's trailer right there and that's where I picked up the skid so So there you go Sounds like a so They do deal with Martin Brower so we know where we're going tomorrow morning. Yay! Good morning. Yeah, it's about quarter to six, and I am ready to get out of here. Go do my delivery. Already did my pre trip this morning. Have my cup of tea. My cup of tea. Well, I can't have any coffee because none of these truck stops in Canada have decaf anymore. They've done away with it, which goes to show you. How much they care about the drivers out here in Canada now they just don't because all the truck stops out in the US have decaf they have them in those little coffee grinder self coffee grinders where they they just pile up one of the things with their beans and they don't have to brew a pot of coffee every hour they just leave it in there and it's nice for whatever reason Canada discriminates against us drivers. Well, well, that's just less money that, that they're going to get from me because I won't drink the regular coffee. The only, for whatever reason it is, the only coffee, and I know I've probably mentioned this to you guys before already, but the only coffee I can drink that doesn't uh, give me anxiety is the A&W coffee regular because it's organic it's nice coffee tastes really good you know it's bizarre it's the nicest tasting coffee I think that's out there the NW coffee um, and it's the only one that doesn't irritate me I mean I can have a small one if I have a large NW coffee or have two or three of them uh, that probably would not work out very well for me but just one small coffee in the morning just to get that satisfactory taste in the morning of the coffee. That's nice. Hi there, I got a delivery tray. Are you, are you from Winnipeg? Yes. That's wonderful. I wonder. A really full one warehouse. What's right that? Now. My warehouse kind of full right now, huh? Well, I, I need to deliver it. Yeah. Normally, uh, if we're full, you have to deliver it to, to the yard right here in the Calgary. What yard? You have no idea? That's no, no. I was told to come here. 
Just hold on a second. Just hold on a second. Okay. Are you going to come back? Um, I'll come back, but just okay. let me deal with my guy first. I got a big issue at this moment. Please. Okay. But uh, normally we can receive it. Our warehouse is quite full right now. Right now it's completely full. I cannot receive any trace right now. Right? So if, if we really full right now, you have to drop to the to the to the yard carry for the local area. So when we need it, we're just gonna go there and take it. I can't drop a trailer. It's my own. It's our trailer. It's not a Martin Brower trailer. It has to be unloaded. You know, I knew there was going to be a twist to this. These Canadian loads are always an incredible inconvenience. Now he's telling me he can't take my load. That means it's going to just drop it over at their warehouse or their yard and they'll pick up the trays when they, ha when they have time is what he said. No, it's getting unloaded today. They, they will find room. I'm not dragging around this stuff with me. That's okay. I'll park right here until they unload me. I'm not bringing this back to the uh, to the truck stop. I'll back right into one of their doors and I'll stay there until they unload it. Okay, so so we got a full right now. How can I, I receive it? And it's your trailer. You said that your trailer. It's our company trailer. It's your company trailer, but not your trailer. No. So you have to ask the company. I can't. You have it's, to drop the trailer. I can't drop the trailer. Are you going to pay me by the hour to sit at the truck stop? No, nobody. Nobody. That's what happened, right? If we really completely full, how can we receive it? It might come. My 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 company is full right now because we shut down yesterday, right? I don't, don't even know where your yard. I don't even know where your yard is. I wasn't it, told. It's not my yard. It's, it, it, you have to deal with the the carrier. Right? Oh, I you don't mean deal with the carrier. You mean swag? Yes, yes. I don't deal with swag. Right? They don't have a yard out here, do no, they? No, they? They do have. Do they, they have, have a cross have, dock do too? Have. Can they unload it? Um, normally, normally what I know, they just drop the trailer over there. That's what I know, right? I don't, I, I don't deal with the swag if, if I'm really completely full. Do you know that's, that's, can you try to call them, actually? They're not going to answer. They're not going to answer? Probably not. I can try phoning them, but I doubt it highly they're going to answer. They'll probably have... Oh, so, so you, so you have no room at all here? Very close to very little. I, what I know right now, it's almost completely full. I, I got like full in the back there. And over here, both, both sides really, really, really tight right now. I can, I can double check to see if I can have any extra space to squeeze as much as I can, right? I would appreciate it because yeah, I don't want to yeah. be driving around Calgary on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I got to do a reload yeah. tomorrow. Okay, okay. Let, let me just, just How long does that going to take, just so I know? Let me just try to check it. I can't squeeze, squeeze in, so I okay. don't really, I don't want to get you, you know, got stuck in somewhere, but, but, uh, I would appreciate yeah. it because nobody told me about this. Yeah, yeah. I understand because normally when you get here, you have no company well, the thing is, I fo I tried to phone you guys. You guys don't even have a phone number. I have what phone number here, but we just no. nothing. Nothing there. Nothing. Not even an address. Yeah. I had to look up your address. I tried to find you on Google. The phone number doesn't exist. It doesn't ring. So I couldn't call to say, "Hey, yeah. do you have room? Yeah. If you would have a phone number, oh. we could have avoided all of this." You know what? You you got a good point. This I is have, ridiculous. I, I, have, I have to speak with my manager to see what they can do about it. Right? Normally, that's... It's a bunch of trays. Yeah. I have to speak with my uh, managers and I compare to the square company. What can you do about Please it? Please let them know it has to come off. Yeah. I got to reload tomorrow. All right. Uh, can you back up that one in door one? I can one put it in door one. I thought get something to load that. Okay. Yeah, my management told me that we're going to be probably loading tomorrow, so I don't have time to mess around like this. By the looks of things, that's a good sized warehouse in there and they got a lot of room in there. They got lots of room in there. Why would they tell me they have no room? You got to be persistent. This is to the new drivers, not to the seasoned ones. You guys know this, but that's ridiculous. 
I could have just said, oh, you don't have room? Well, I'll go back to the truck stop, get a hold of my manager. When he finally gets up, who wants to be woken up at 5.30 in the morning on a Sunday? Our management works hard enough as it is. They don't need to be woken up. So it's like, if they would have said, sorry, we do not have room for you, I would have said, okay, well, guess what? I'll be parked in your loading dock until you have room because I'm not going to fight to get back in here again during the day. Right now, as you can see, it's a Sunday morning and there's barely any traffic on this road. And you know darn well on a Monday or even during the day, any day besides the weekend, I bet you this road is busy. And you see how much fun I had getting into that door. And here's more evidence of other guys trying to back into these docks. Just look at that. I don't know why on earth they do this. Oh, it's a magpie. Hello, magpie. I love magpies. They remind me of little penguins. Is he going to come right up to me? Hi. Are you going to come and say hi? Or you want to look in the dirt to see if there's any, uh, any worms in there? Wow, is he ever brave? I've never had a magpie come that close to me before. Isn't that amazing? Those are such beautiful birds. I love those birds. They always remind me of Chelsea. The reason why is I took her on a trip one time into Calgary when I was driving for Challenger. And we were walking through the truck stop and we seen a magpie on top of a trailer just hopping. And she's like, yeah, that's cute. And I'll never forget that. Because she would have never seen a magpie before. It's like a little mini penguin. Yeah. Persistence pays off, baby. Out of all due respect, gentlemen, you have a wonderful day, but get the stuff off my trailer. <laughs> Well, friends, I'm unloaded. Yay! Well, they seem to have found the room. I told them in a very, very nice way, respectable way. It's getting, <laughs> it's getting unloaded. It's not, it, it's, it's, uh, I'm not, you know, if it was our, our load and we had a yard here and they were too full and they I, I guess they make arrangements with the other carrier that when they come into town with their their trays if they're too full they take it to their yard here in Calgary and they drop the trailer and then they when they want it they just call for it well I'm certainly not gonna sit with this trailer full of trays until they're ready for me <laughs> No, not happening. Sometimes you just have to be persistent. And uh, they had room for it. I could see they into their warehouse. So they weren't, I think, being completely honest with me about that. But like I said, they found the room. And we're good. We're empty. Thank goodness. What a nightmare. Well, it's not even a nightmare, but what an inconvenience. That's a better word for it. If that's the definition of a nightmare, I got bigger problems. That's not a nightmare. It's just a very, very inconvenient situation. I'll have to let our dispatch know if they ever do a load like that. Probably we won't. But to be prepared that that could happen. All right, so back on the Glenmore Trail, going back up to the truck stop, and we'll park it there. I'm gonna be there probably for the day. I don't think I'm gonna get a reload today. If I do, I'll be absolutely shocked. No. Oh, uh, you know what? Why am I going that way? Hold on a minute. I'm going to go this way because this is going to take me right to the truck stop. I don't want to take Glenmore Trail. Yeah, I'll go this way. This will be quicker. 